Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to continue our series on hormones of the adrenal gland. So in the last couple of videos we talked about aldosterone and cortisol pathways and today we're finally going to be talking about androgens and how we produce masculinizing hormones in the adrenal gland. And so this pathway follows uh, very similarly to the last couple pathways, which is why um, if any of this doesn't make sense, please make sure you go back and watch the pathways on aldosterone and cortisol, because as these pathways are interconnected, uh, it is important to understand all of them in order to understand how androgens are produced and how they function. So uh, we're just gonna pick up where we left off. Um, we talked about the zona glomerulosa, which produces aldosterone. We talked about the zona fasciculata, which produces cortisol. And today we're talking about the zona reticularis, the most inner uh, layer of the adrenal cortex. And this is where we produce androgens. And we produce uh, most of our androgens as humans in the gonads, uh, both people with testes and people with ovaries produce testosterone in the gonads, um, either in the testes or in the ovaries. Uh, but we do produce uh, a significant amount of androgens, namely androstenedione, dione in the adrenal gland. A small amount of testosterone will be produced, um, but a lot of uh, what we're looking for here is androstenedione, dione, which is going to be peripherally converted to testosterone or estrogens. Um, so we are in the zona reticularis today, and we start off with uh, a molecule we're very familiar with by now, and that is cholesterol. Uh, just like aldosterone and cortisol, we start off with cholesterol, which is converted by cholesterol desmolase to pregnenolone. This pathway is very similar to the pathway we saw before. Uh, we're very familiar with pregnenolone at this point, and 3-beta HSD, which converts pregnenolone to progesterone. And then, uh, as we saw in the last video, progesterone and pregnenolone uh, are converted by 17-alpha hydroxylase to 17-hydroxypregnenolone and 17-hydroxyprogesterone, respectively. And as we talked about as well, 3-beta HSD can also convert 17-hydroxypregnenolone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. And now, uh, we're going to redirect to the androgen pathway. So we're starting today with 17-hydroxypregnenolone and 17-hydroxyprogesterone and see where those end up. So 17-hydroxypregnenolone is converted by an enzyme called 1720-lyase to a molecule of DHEA. And DHEA is kind of our mega precursor to all androgens and even to estrogens. A lot of times when we are producing testosterone and estrogen, the very first stop is DHEA. And this is true in the adrenal gland. This is also true um, in the ovaries. It's also true in fetal production of estrogen. And so DHEA is kind of almost think of it as like our stem cell of androgens. We're almost always uh, going to have DHEA wherever we are producing um, androgens. Uh, but 17-hydroxyprogesterone, let's say we've already gone from cholesterol to pregnenolone to progesterone and then followed this pathway. So now we're not even thinking about pregnenolone anymore, just progesterone. We can follow a similar pathway and also use 1720-lyase to convert directly to androstenedione. And androstenedione is the primary androgen produced in the adrenal gland. And um, most of your androgens are going to be androstenedione, which are then going to leave the adrenal gland to uh, be converted by peripheral tissues to estrogen by aromatase, if you remember our aromatase pathway, which I will go into more detail on later. Um, but it can also be converted to testosterone peripherally. Um, but DHEA can be converted to androstenedione by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Uh, so anytime, as you can probably see, anytime we have cholesterol that's converted to pregnenolone, and anything along the pregnenolone pathway, uh, whether it be pregnenolone or DHEA, any of those, anytime they need to go from that tier to the progesterone tier, they're going to use 3-beta-HSD, to get there. Um, so think of 3-beta HSD as our common enzyme for converting anything and all, all things pregnenolone to any and all things progesterone. And then um, interstenedione in uh, small amounts of this will be converted um, in the adrenal gland to testosterone. And this is by an enzyme called 17-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. And um, 
that converts androstenedione to testosterone. And so that is how we get from cholesterol to testosterone in the adrenal gland. And as you can see, we don't even use our common enzymes of 21 hydroxylase or um, 11 beta hydroxylase because we kind of rerouted to a different direction. We still have the common enzyme of 17 alpha hydroxylase. So you can see where that might be a problem. Um, but start thinking ahead right now. Um, since we don't have 21 hydroxylase in this pathway, uh, a deficiency of 21 hydroxylase won't really matter here. Um, and that's just kind of going to prime you for the next video on differences in sexual development. So I hope this made the testosterone pathway make sense and leave your comments and questions down below. Uh, subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next one.